Hello and welcome to the second poetry video uh, covering the poems that you'd study in year 10 for the anthology. This one is about London by William Blake. So remember these are lessons that I would teach um, you so therefore you can obviously do the annotations if you want to, you can do the tasks surrounding it if you want to, it's kind of up to you. If I was going to teach this in a, in a lesson I would start with the task that's on the, the, the slide at the moment. Biggest social issues in East Grinstead or wherever else you live. Basically what are the biggest issues you witness are, are aware of socially? So you might think about things like poverty, homelessness, uh, you know what's out there, accessibility for youth and various things like that. You know, it's up to you what you, you interpret that as what makes your town a good or bad place to be brought up in as always spend a few minutes doing that but i'll give you sort of five seconds or so on the video before i continue unlike the video before i don't have a slide that just has the poem on its own um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out the poem to you now before I then move on because it gives you that chance hopefully to start to identify some of the key themes, some of the key ideas. London is a great poem because firstly it's quite short but also primarily because um, it has a lot to do with language and structure and imagery and it's one that you know you can get some good ideas from and it's useful because it's comparable to multiple poems. So I'll read the poem and then just you know start to consider what it might be about. I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woe. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every ban, the mind-forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier's sigh runs in blood down palace walls. But most through midnight streets I hear how the youthful harlots curse, blast the newborn infant's tear, and blights with plagues the marriage hearse. So I'll just give you five seconds or so on the video. Just have a bit of a think what you think it's about. I'm going to take you through the context and then show you some annotations. So London during Blake's time, so obviously the poem London is about London, but London during Blake's time in particular wasn't a very nice place to live. Um, there was poverty, child labour, and we were at war with France. It was quite a horrific war, quite a lot of people dying and uh, coming, home, or coming home with injuries and sort of... Uh, long-term health issues women had no rights death rates from disease and malnutrition were high and the industrial revolution had resulted in many large oppressive factories so whilst the industrial revolution in some areas was a good thing for us it did turn london more into what it is now london was always quite big but it it made it you know full of pollution full of smog full of all these things that you know people didn't like these things were quite oppressive quite faceless not very nice to sort of see and look at and it just it kind of ruined the the, the atmosphere of the capital city and blake was kind of rallying against this stuff he didn't like this th th these things and also uh, you know london should have arguably been the greatest city in the world but it was actually kind of considered quite dirty and quite corrupt by blake his uh, he was influenced by the french revolution so it just says here the french people revolted against the monarchy and aristocracy so basically you had the working class people standing up against those who were in positions of authority and they actually used violence and murder to overthrow those in power um blake saw it as inspirational as did many people because it was a chance for ordinary and disadvantaged people to seize power he alludes to it a bit in london sort of suggesting actually that you know whilst there are people in positions of power that abuse the power they needed to actually consider maybe what they could do in the long term to um kind of go against this and to wrestle power away from those in authority this is more context, just for context's sake. It's just you know nice to know. This just says here that it was published uh, in 1794. Uh, in the, there was two collections. There were Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience. Now, in Songs of Innocence, the poem were positive in tone. They were celebrating love and childhood and nature. And then in Songs of Experience, it was more about the effects of modern life on people and nature. Now, the reason this is uh, sort of of interest is because, uh, firstly, London ended up in Songs of Experience, of course. But it had no direct comparison poems, so therefore he wasn't looking to show two sides of the same kind of uh, idea. He was just making a statement. This was about him showing, actually, this is what London is like. This is how things need to change. So here are the annotations, and I'll take you through them. And sort of, as I said, this, this focuses more on kind of understanding, perhaps, more than anything else. That, and then obviously it's the foundation upon which you'll build your analysis. So 
the, the interesting thing here for structure is it's four lines, four standards. They are similar. There are some subtle differences, but effectively what it's showing you is London is always the same. Things are not changing. The ABAB rhyme scheme, sort of the, the regular rhyme scheme that you see throughout, so you have ABAB, CDCD, and then so on and so forth, it kind of represents him walking. It's the noise of the walk. It's the sort of, you know, he's taking a stroll around London and telling us what he sees. Now, again, as, as, as with the one before, this is not necessarily Blake. It's the persona, the persona of the poem, but the persona and Blake are probably the same person. He is telling us what he feels and what he sees. So starting with the first stanza, the idea here is he's exploring is the idea of a, a man controlling nature. The idea of something being chartered means it's owned by someone. So the chartered street, he's talking about the buildings that are owned by people and people, you know, in terms of, you know, positions of authority and power and rich and having money. But then he talks about the chartered Thames and the idea of, you know, the sort of almost like man's desires or attempts to control nature around it um you know the bridges that go over it the buildings that are built up around it in some ways we're trying to control that element of nature repetition is a key thing in this poem and you see it uh, in the first stanza here with words like mark so mark's mentioned three times mark it means two different things here mark means literally to see or to notice but then marks of weakness marks of woe the physical marks on the people so he's seeing people who are weak and people who are sad the repetition continues in standard two, where we have in every cry, in every infant, in every voice, in every band. Now, this is making it clear that everyone is suffering here. So you have the cry of every man, you have the infants, you have the voice, you have the band. Everyone is suffering. It doesn't matter what age you are, what gender you are. Everyone is having having problems. But it's the last line of this stanza that makes it kind of really stand out because he calls it, um, or he he talks about the mind forged manacles. Now, mind forged manacles is a metaphor. Um, Manacles are the things that prisoners would have around their wrists that sort of keep them, I think wrists and, and ankles actually, to, to stop them from moving. And mind forged implies that they are created by the mind, they're created by yourself. So you are the person, if you're living in London and experiencing these bad things, by not rising up and making a difference, you are the person who's accepted your position in life. You're the person who hasn't done enough to make a difference or make a change so rather than just blame certain people he is also placing the blame on on the citizens of london as well which is an, an interesting take the people he does blame it on are clear from stanza three See, this is quite a, a symbolic stanza and there's quite a lot of metaphor in here as well he talks about the idea of the chimney sweepers crying and the blackening church and the hapless soldiers and how the, the the blood runs down palace walls what he's suggesting here is the chimney sweepers represent child poverty the idea of kids going out to work and you know generally only happen with with people who are working class the blackening church so the church um here is being presented as corrupt or at least um could be doing more maybe to resolve issues around child poverty the hapless soldiers are those who are out fighting in France, the idea that they are the soldiers that go out and, and, and are getting killed. The blood runs down palace walls because they're protecting the already rich monarchy. They're fighting for a king who himself has sent his men to fight but isn't doing any of the fighting himself. So they are the ones who are suffering, whilst again the people in, you know, who are in uh, positions of authority and power and generally rich aren't suffering in the same way. So the last stanza is, uh, you know, again, moves to another sort of concept here where we see other things that he he notices as he walks around London. So we have the youthful harlot's curse, which links to kind of prostitute swearing. It shows the extent of the problem of poverty, though, the idea that, you know, these young women are having to go out and, you know, sell their bodies to make money and be able to li live their life. But also it's uh, kind of getting to, to, to the nitty gritty of basically how... Uh, pervasive how full of kind of corruption and, and, and issues london really really is especially because she blasts the newborn infant's tear so even the young children that are born into to this environment are going to suffer um off the back of you know what's happening around them and you have this oxymoron to finish off and oxymoron remembers two words that are kind of contradictory in nature that are placed next to each other the idea of the marriage hearse the idea you know marriage linking to to, to weddings hearse linking to death and it's almost showing that even the good things throughout life are being ruined so you know the birth of a new child the um marriage of people if they're being born into or married into this environment it's it's a negative thing. It's still it's still a bad thing. It's not um, unfortunately it can't rise above where it started and where it started is a corrupt London. Unfortunately, to finish off, uh, there's a couple of slides here. One just kind of tries to summarise the meaning. So Blake's walking through London and it's appalled by what he sees. Though most people don't care enough to complain, he particularly dislikes the church and the monarchy for not trying to do anything to change people's circumstances. That's kind of your overview. That's me trying to you know nail down the, you know the meaning in maybe thirty words or less. We talked about structure, but there's one last kind of bit about structure here. 
So it's about the regular alternate scheme, the idea of the regular walking pace. But it's interesting because stanza one, stanza two, stanza three, and stanza four all focus on slightly different things. You know, one focuses on general misery, stanza two is on the people's refusal to stand tall, stanza three moves on to how people are sacrificed, the rich and powerful, and stanza four is how all this poverty is corrupting everything good about family and life. It does say here, the last line in each stanza tends to deliver a powerful statement which sums up the rest of the stanza. So if we go back just for... Um, you see here, for example, the idea of the mind forged manacles comes as the last uh, line in stanza two. Marks of weakness, marks of woe. The, ha the, the, the blood running it, it down palace walls is the end of stanza three. So they are the most effective kind of symbols, the most effective statements that are being mentioned here. Anyway, that is the poem. As always, any queries, questions, concerns, uh, do let me know. Obviously, stay safe, uh, look after each other, and I will post some more videos later in the week. Okay, bye.